section 8.1 we're going to be solving quadratic equations by completing the square. The first thing, these first problems we're going to work with, we're just going to use our square root property to solve. Um, number one, when you want to solve for x and just get x by itself, first thing we need to do is get rid of the square. So to do that, we take the square root of both sides, and then you're going to get x equals plus or minus, and then the square root of 49 is just 7. Now we want to write that as two answers, so our answer is going to be 7 and negative 7. Alright, number two, first thing we want to do is get the x by itself, so I need to divide both sides by 2. And then that gives me x squared equals 2. And to undo the square, we do the square root of both sides. So you're going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of 2, so that's going to be square root of 2 and negative square root of 2. There's your solutions. Number 3, the same thing. We want to get y by ourselves, so we take the square root of y, square root of 20, so um, square root of y squared. And that gives us y equals plus or minus the square root of 20. Now we want to see if 20 can simplify further. Um, let's take prime, prime factors out of it. 20 divided by 2 is 10. That divides by 2 which is 5 and since the index is a 2, the index is a known 2, um, we can take pairs. So a 2 comes out front and the square root of 5 is left underneath the radical since it doesn't have a pair of 5. So you get plus or minus 2 square root of 5. My answers are 2 square root of 5 and negative 2 square root of 5. Alright, let's look at number four. Same thing. First of all, we want to undo the squares by taking the square root of both sides. So you're going to have y minus 3 equals square root of 4 is just 2. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Oh, that's going to be plus or minus 2. Anytime you take the square root, do not, do not forget you have plus or minus 2. And now we want to get y by itself, so we add 3 to both sides. So I have y equals 3 plus or minus 2. Well, 3 plus 2 is 5. That's one answer. And then 3 minus 2 is 1, so that's the other answer. So we actually evaluate that. All right, number five, we're going to take the square root of both sides, so that gives us 2x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 8. Well, we want to come off to the side and see if 8, when we do prime factors, if it simplifies further, so divide by 2 and you get 4, divide by 2 and you're going to get 2, so there's a pair, so you have 2 square root of 2. So I'm going to rewrite this, leave this alone. I'm going to say plus or minus the square root of 8 simplifies to 2 square root of 2. Now our goal is to still solve for x, so we're going to add 3 to both sides. So we have 2x equals 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 2. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2. So x equals 3 plus 2 square root of 2 over 2, and then 3 minus 2 square root of 2 over 2. Don't forget your plus or minus. Number 6, I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to move 6 to the other side. So I have x squared equals 6. To take solve, we're going to take the square root of both sides, and so you're going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Now, when we just try 6, divide by 2, 3, there's no pairs, so square root of 6 does not simplify any further, so our answer is just the square root of 6 and the negative square root of 6. And we're done there. Alright, let's move up to number 7. The first thing we're going to do is let's subtract 36, try to get p by itself, so I have 3p squared equals negative 36, divide both sides by 3, 
Then we have p squared equals negative 12. To undo a square, we take the square root. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. So we're going to have p equals plus or minus the square root of a negative 12. Okay, so we're going to take... I could actually break this negative 12 down into square root of a negative 1 times the square root of 12. Okay, this becomes i. Our square root of negative 1 is our i. Okay, and then the square root of 12, if I come up to the side and I divide the prime factors out of it, 12 divided by 2 is 6, divides by 2 is 3, so this becomes 2 square root of 3. So i times 12 simplifies to 2 square root of 3. So if I simplify that and I multiply them, I'm going to have 2i square root of 3. Combine those two, 2i two square root of 3, and then do not forget my plus or minus. So I have 2i square root of 3 and negative 2i square root of 3. Alright, number 8, we're going to solve by completing the square. When we complete the square, we want to be able to choose our own c value, which um, this represents our a value, 1. This is our b, 6, and our c is 2. We want to be able to choose our own c value so that we have a perfect square on that side. So we're going to move over and have x squared plus 6x plus, remember we want to choose that value, equals negative 2. Now the way we choose our c value is a formula which is b over 2, b divided by 2 squared. So you take your b term, our b term is 6, so I'm going to write 6, divided by 2 and squared. Well 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9, so if I add 9 on this side, I also have to add 9 to the other side. Now right here, we can factor using bottoms up, meaning what multiplies to give us 9 adds to give us 6. That's going to be a 3 and a 3, so I would have x plus 3, x plus 3. So you can factor that out using bottoms up, or the shortcut is you take the variable of the first term, x, the sine of the second, plus, and the square root of the c term, which is 3, and then you put that in parentheses and square it and you're going to get 7. So you can either use bottoms up, which works fine with this, and you will get x plus 3 squared, or you can use a shortcut method, which says variable of the first, sine of the middle term, square root of your c term, and then put it in parentheses and square it. From there, we just continue solving. To undo a square, you take the square root, so you would have x plus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. Continue to get x by itself. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. So I would do negative 3 plus the square root of 7. Negative 3 minus the square root of 7. Okay, number 9. We're going to work the same way. First of all, we're going to move our c term over to the other side so we can choose our own. Okay, we said to choose our c term, we're going to get um, b divided by 2 squared. So our b in this one is going to be 2. There's our b. So this is a is 1, b is 2, c was negative 5, but we moved it. So we're going to say b over 2. So our b is 2. We divide that by 2 and then square it. Well, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. If you add 1 here, you have to add 1 on this side to equal sign. We're looking for what multiplies to give us 1. Adds to give us 2. That's going to be x plus 1 squared. So we take shortcut variable of the first. Sign of the second, square root of the third, square root of one is just one, square it, equals six.
we're going to continue with our square root property. So we're going to have x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Subtract 1 from both sides. We're going to have x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 6.